What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and this might be the Niche Killer. Now that phrase has been thrown around quite a bit ever since James Hoffman's video on the DF-64, and nothing has really toppled Nisha's place at the top of the pyramid of these sub $1,000 grinders as regards workflow. Now, a lot of grinders out there taste better, but a lot of people really value the workflow that the Niche offers them. And I think that this, the Time More Sculptor 078, might just upset that hierarchy. But before we get into my contentiousness, I'm sorry, I, I, just, I just keep getting distracted. My cameraman, Ugo, over here, his beard is just so thick and luscious, and mine is not. Come show them, get out of here. Anyway, I grew the mustache back, and is it even worth growing it? And so, I frequently have to shave. Now, when I do shave, I do use Harry's, and I've been using Harry's for five or six years now. I absolutely love the brand, and when they reached out to sponsor a video, I was, I was touched. Now, Harry's razors are manufactured in their factory in Germany. It's a unisex, incredibly nice five-blade razor that just feels so nice over the contours of my Henry Cavill jawline. I'm gonna show you real quick what that looks like. And, and there we are. Nice, clean shaven. Oh, so smooth. Look at that. No rash, no sensitive skin, just flawless Henry Cavill jawline. Now they've released some new products with two-tone handles, and my favorite of these is the Sage one. It's got this brilliant sage color that honestly just makes me happy to look at. Using their foaming shave gel is incredible, and it feels good on my skin. Because of the inclusion of aloe and hyaluronic acid, it doesn't hurt my sensitive skin. Now, I don't even know what hyaluronic acid is, but I know it's good for me. Now, 50% of the plastic used in their products is recycled plastic. And on top of that, 1% of their global sales are donated to nonprofit organizations. I have a link below in the caption. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click on that link and for five US dollars, you can get a starter kit. And then in this starter kit, you get a five blade razor. You're gonna get a razor cover and you're gonna get that hyaluronic acid and aloe shaving gel. So hit that link below, I know you want to. And thank you, thank you Harry's for doing this. And if you're out there and you have really thick facial hair follicles and you are blessed with something I'm not blessed with, if you don't grow a beard, you're insulting me. All right, well let's get back into this contentious video. This is the Time More Sculptor 078. Now there's gonna be a separate one that comes out soon after their Kickstarter, that's a 64 millimeter, so the 064. This one has 78 millimeter flat burrs inside of it. Now both of them are going to be, I think, pretty cost efficient. This one sits currently at about $800, $850. The other one I'm not quite sure yet, but I'd imagine around 600, 650. So something in the range of like, of the niche essentially. So. Right now, this is not in available in most areas around the world. The way I was able to secure this is by using a little VPN, because I'm a hacker, and I was able to get this down to Portugal. Now, the burrs I have in here are those turbo burrs, which I'll show you in a second. They're not traditional burrs. They're kind of a mix between ghost burrs, which I have a video on here, and normal flat burrs. So these cannot do espresso, but they can go fine enough to like mocha pot. It's almost to espresso, but not quite. A 30, uh, if you did a 30 gram shot, it would take six or seven seconds to extract, but it's fine enough for everything else. Now I messaged Time More to see if they could set me up with the 78 millimeter espresso burrs, I'd pay for it, but they literally said they're not ready yet. So I'll be looking at their Kickstarter in order to get them because even though I've not tried their espresso burrs, I know it's going to beat out the flavor of a lot of these grinders under $1,000 only because your feel, the, the aesthetic, the workflow, the ergonomics, all factor into your taste experience, which is evidenced by something like the niche, which hasn't changed in five years. Looking at the build of it, first off, it's incredibly well built. It's robust, it's heavy, it feels premium. Everything on it is there for a purpose. So on the side, you have a large metal button for on and off. And as you hear, 
it's quiet. That brushless DC motor just kind of hums, just very quietly. It's a very nice sound, actually. And then on the back, you have variable RPM. So you have a knob right here that goes from 800 all the way up to 1400 RPM so that you can play around with your particle distribution. Now, they posit that lower RPM produces less fines, higher RPM, more fines when it comes to this burst set. And it seems that they have taken some laser particle analysis that they've posted on their website. Then, of course, you have up here, one of my favorite features on any grinder that has this I, I, I love is a magnetically centering catch cup. So I absolutely love that. Boom. There's a magnet right here, a little cross, and you have a magnet on the bottom of your catch cup, and it just centers itself so that you don't miss the nozzle, which is the next thing I'd like to talk about. This nozzle is what they call a fines collector. So as coffee is grinding, if you don't use RDT, all the particles that weigh very little kind of get stuck in the chute, as you've seen on other machines. So something like the Ode now has anti-static. You can sit there and no static. there's like no static. So everything gets in your dosing cup. And that's the goal of Ross Droplet Technique, spraying a little water on it, it will reduces the static load. Now in this, they're still static. They don't make it anti-static. And the idea is it can catch those fines and chaff, and then you can stop grinding, and you can use the fines collector to dispose of them separately. I use this all the time, and it is absolutely fantastic. I cannot praise it enough. All you're doing is you're twisting it, and what happens, the tube kind of in the center, the little pipe there, twists on threads, and then snaps back up with a powerful pop. And that vibrates anything that's in there into the cup to give you zero retention, essentially. You have this incredibly smooth and premium feeling adjustment dial. I absolutely love it. It's like the difference between a cheap keyboard where you have the plastic keys on there and you're playing. Then you move to a premium keyboard and they have the weighted keys and you're like, doom, 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 bring the ding, ding, bring the ding, like that. This grinder is not stepless. It has 36 steps, all right? So there's 18 numbers and then there are half steps in between, which is not as big of a range as, say, the 50 markers on the niche or, uh, you know, something else. But I will be honest, this this has, is going to have more than enough range to be able to dial in espresso when you put in the new espresso burrs that they'll release at Kickstarter. And even if it's not, it'll be a simple modification in order to get it down to step list. There's always an easy way to do that. I've not messed with it because right now I'm using it as a filter only grinder because of the burr set inside. But once they release the new ones, I'm excited to get in there and see exactly how much control there is with espresso. So my conjecture on being a niche killer is just that a conjecture because I don't know how it will react with espresso espresso, but I can't imagine it not being better than everything else on the market under a thousand. Just with how impressed I am with these burrs, the espresso burrs actually look very similar to the Weber EG1 core burr. Looks very similar to this. And if they taste anything like this, it's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Being 78 millimeters, this is 80. Like, it's it's going to be, and in, 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 I'm, I'm confident it's going to taste really nice. So I'm excited for that to be released so I can get it in, maybe do an updated review in the future with this and maybe the 64 millimeter as well. So moving up from that, we have the hopper on top. Now the top hopper is like a robust plastic. I know that sounds weird. I'm saying that because I'm kind of comparing it to the, the Odes top filter. This one is a bit thicker. It just feels more hefty and there's a nice magnet on it, which I really like. The magnet sticks to this little anti-popcorn device right up top, so it just kind of goes on there nicely. It takes this lightweight lid and makes it feel a little bit heavier, which I actually feel like is a nice touch. I would not recommend taking the lid off and just dumping beans in and letting it go. There's gonna be popcorning because in order to make this compact, right here is where the auger is. And since the auger is acting as a pre-breaker, they will tend to jump, even though it's riding up here and then feeding there because there are intense ridges on the auger, you're gonna have jumping. So I just pull this back kind of like a shutter, and then this acts like a slide, the hopper does. And I don't use RDT with this. So I just slide this back, then I let it ride, all right? And then push it right back forward, it's grinding, you're good to go. So to take the adjustment knob off, it's very simple. And you just do a little wobble wee woo. This is a really nice robust feeling piece. It's not plastic. It's got a really nice metal inside with a magnet in the center. Again, I love magnets. Thank you everyone for listening. All you manufacturers, you know I love some mags. So when you look inside, we obviously see a knob right here. This connects to that front adjustment dial and look at this, boom. 
boom, that's how it moves around. Now, if you want to recalibrate the machine, it's as easy as pie. You just take this little knob off and you'll place it into a separate hole just like those old school phones that I'm sure a lot of you are too young to remember. A lot of you are so old that you probably use them. I'm right in that sweet spot in between. If I take the pen out and I kind of spin it a bit, oh no, where was the original location? How am I supposed to know? I need to call Lance to figure this out. Well, you don't have to because they say pin. There are six hex screws that are holding this in. I've already taken out four because I'm a cheater. Uh, so I'm gonna take out these two to pull this out and show you what the burr set looks like. All right, so we have all six screws out. And just to show you how strong that magnet is on that front plate, look at that, I'm holding it by a screw. Boom. Okay, so we have this front and we're gonna take it right out. And there you go. This is what is right behind that adjustment knob. So as this turns, this bit, these two little discs move forward and back in order to change the grind size. It pushes the burr set forward or backward, forward or backward, yada, 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 yada. And taking a look at this, it would be easy to make stepless. You just have to take this front plate off and essentially make that peg stop. Also, it's pretty shocking just how much everything on this weighs. It just, it's, it just feels quality. So when you look inside, you're probably thinking, oh my God, more screws to get to the burrs. I've already taken out six fret knot. So we have this here. And then all you're gonna do is there are little fins kind of on the side, you wanna line them up so I push forward just a little bit, make sure they're lined up, and then it pulls right on out. So there we have the burr with the auger attached. As you see right here, the auger has this intense swirling mechanism. And what happens as the beans are fed in, they go through that, they get cracked like in half and thirds and fourths, whatever it might be, just erratic uh, breaking. And then it feeds into the center of these two facing burrs. And then the centrifugal force forces them through the pathway to get ejected. Now the idea behind this three phase turbo burrs as they call it, what they say is it doesn't smush the beans, it, it like breaks them and cuts them as opposed to smushing them. So that does make sense on the outer edge. As you see up close, the outer edge has those ghost burrs, just like in my ghost, uh, ghost burr video. So you have something like that on the end, which doesn't allow you to get fine enough for espresso, but it does speculatively minimize fines production. And I found this to be the case. Now to put it back in, we're just gonna realign those flaps with the grooves inside the chamber, push in, push all the way in till we feel the resistance of the spring and turn to lock it in. On a lot of grinders, you kind of have to screw one side, screw another, screw another, screw another, and kind of go back, forth, back, forth in a diamond type pattern in order to ensure you have consistent alignment because the amount of torque each screw has will affect the alignment. But in this one, they have it so the way you put it in is the same way every time, again, similar to the Bentwood. Now I've dialed these in as best as I could for each of them. I wanted them to be similar grind sizes. So it's on the finer side of things because I know a lot of people like to push extraction with this. Now, I, I don't have, again, uh, I don't have any relative particle size distribution information or data in order to say definitively that this has less fines than this with multipurpose. But what I can say is like the Easy Presso ZP6 and hand grinders, I can continually push this extraction higher and higher without hitting astringency. So whereas normally I might do like 21 or 22% extraction on the multipurpose uh, burrs here, I could go 23, 24 here and it's still tasting fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and brew and then we'll talk more about my two months of testing and tasting and blind tastings against the EG1 ULF, the fellow Ode with the SSP, different things. So in this video right here, I stated that the fellow Ode with the SSP multi-purpose burrs was the best filter grinder before diminishing returns really hit in. I now want to take that back and say, I think this time more 078 with those turbo burrs is the best before diminishing returns. That's how much better I think this is. For a, a, maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars more, I think it is well worth that extra bit of money because it's it's bringing something really unique to the cup. I, I don't know, between this and the ULF on the EG1, which I absolutely adore, it really depends on the day. This 
This, the best way I can describe it, the Bentwood tried their hand at SSP clarity. So if Kieber, who's the one that uh, designed those burrs, the Tau Mill for Bentwood, if he was to try to do a unimodal style burr. So there's a ton of juiciness, there's some, there is nice clarity, but the number one thing about these burrs is it's the most juicy, the most juicy cups I've gotten. So it really depends if I'm really, if I'm in the mood for like extreme clarity with the ULF burrs inside that EG1, or if I just want a really juicy cup of coffee. This one does not give the clarity of the ULFs, and it does not give the juiciness of this. It gives a really nice cup, an incredible cup, and I still think it is, I mean, it's arguable whether or not this is before diminishing or if this is, but for the $100, $200 discrepancy, I do think I would choose this. But anyway, let's put my money where my mouth is, even though there's no money here. I have two cups with 100 grams each of a coffee brewed on this one and two cups, 100 grams each on this one so I don't see volume differences. Now I'm going to have uh, Hugo come on and switch these up for me and we're going to taste and see what's going on. All right, so all of these are now mixed up. Just so you know, two is on the bottom of the Time Wars. Nothing is on the bottom of the Fellow Oats. So I'm going to go through and taste and I'll describe essentially what I'm tasting. And the last one has that same drying astringency as this one. So I'm thinking... We have this a little situation like this going on. And based off of what my prior testing would say, is that these would be the sculptor, this would be the ode. So we'll actually do this just to see if we got that right. We got one, and that is the sculptor. We got two, and that is the sculptor. This is not the basis of what I'm saying is this test right here. This is more so for the visual thing. And to give you a, a look into how I test at home, this has a lot of juiciness, it's very syrupy, it's got a really nice body, and it stays quite clean. It almost It's almost like um, you hear people talk about clean naturals. It almost takes washed coffees and turns them into clean naturals, whereas this one just keeps them incredibly floral and tea-like. Now, when you push extraction on this, I have found a, a stringency when you push it really, really hard. Uh, now, I'm not sure why that is, but I have found that, and it's happening in this bowl right here. This one, no stringency, nice, juicy, crisp, yada, yada, yada. So that is not to say you should get rid of your ode. The ode is still 64 millimeters and there's a lot more options there. So if you're wanting to switch things out, you do have that route. But keep in mind, it has a 140 watt motor. The DF64 has a 250. This has 400 and it's quite cheap. When I say cheap, I'm not saying cheap in general. I'm saying relative to the other options that have a similar motor. Relativity is, an, uh, is a term to be understood when we're talking budget and cheap. Um, this in comparison to a Lagone P64, cheap. And I think actually they have a very similar motor. Do I think it's a niche killer? Well, currently no, it's not. And it's because there's no espresso burr and I haven't, I've not been able to test that. Do I think it will be? Yes, I do. I, I think because of the workflow, I think because of some of the cool innovations like this right here, the fact that it has uh, variable speed RPM, and the fact that it's, it is it is gonna be more flexible, I think it will be, especially the 64 millimeter one, because that one is proven with other burr sets. There are a ton on the market, and if it has variable speed, a robust brushless DC motor, it should be good to go. Now this is the 78 mils. There's not many options on the market, so you're relying on Time Wars furnishing of these burr sets. Now I'm sure if this grinder takes off, more and more aftermarket burrs will become available, but as it stands, I. I'm the burr man, and I don't know of any other uh, 78 millimeter burrs. There, there might be some. I know of 75s. I know of, you know, but when it comes to 78, that's kind of an odd, an odd size. So, um, this one in its current state, well, no, it doesn't. But on filter, I think it kills everything else. And I do think once it has espresso capability, it will dominate everything under probably 1500. The build quality, the aesthetic, the capabilities, the all of it put together for about 800 bucks. Wow. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for bearing with me on the clickbaity title. Thank you for Harry sponsoring this video. And thank you for hitting that subscriber and the like and leaving a comment below saying you're the bird man because I am the bird man. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thanks so much for coming along. I hope you brew something tasty as I drink something tasty. And cheers. Oh.